Hi, welcome to Job Form. My name is George, and today I'm going to show you how to get started with approvals so you can understand how it works and how to implement it on your forms. Now, to understand the overall overview of what approvals does, let's just take, for example, if someone fills out a form and you need that form to pass through a filter, that's where approvals comes in, where you can approve or deny that form that was filled out. Now, let's head on over to my desktop to check out approvals right now. Okay, this is our job form dashboard and I'm going to show you how to get started with approvals really easily and really fast. So the first thing that we're going to do is head on over to approvals by clicking on my form, my approvals, and this will open up the approvals section. Now we're going to be able to view the previous approvals that we have. Let's wait for them to load. Okay, here they are. And we have the assigned to me approvals from previous approvals that we've worked on. Now to get started, let's go into create approval. We're going to get three options, which is start from scratch, one step approval for something really simple or use a template. If you have, uh, if you want to use something that's already made, that helps you out. That's make, makes it quicker. That helps out. In this case, we'll start with scratch. Okay. The overall elements of approvals. The first thing that we're going to do is lock a form that we're going to be using for this approval. So for example, if I grab this form, it's going to be used for this approval section. First thing that I'm going to do is build a simple approval so you can understand the concept and then we'll work with the other elements so you understand how they work. So the first thing that we're going to do is lock in one of the approvals. Let's drag it to the top. And what we're going to do right now is if someone fills out this form, this is going to start off the approval section. And what we're going to do is add two emails right here. Okay. And we're going to lock them in by using these arrows right here, clicking on the plus sign and dragging them there. Now you can see we have this outcome outline in gray. If I click on it, we're going to say if it's approved, it's going to send this email. If it's not approved, we're going to deny and we're going to send out another email. To edit these emails, we click on it and we edit the email right here. Obviously to customize it to whatever you need. Also, we need to add the end flow when we are done. Okay, that is a simple approvals create. Okay, that's how we create something simple. Now. Let's go into a little bit something more complex. We can add conditional logic with if else condition. So drag in here. Okay, let's drag it here and we'll lock it to it. We'll delete that one. Yes, confirm. And what we're doing right here, if, if else condition, we're going to go into the gear icon and based on the form fields that we have are the options that we're going to get. So if, for example, the name on this one is empty, let's just say it save. We're going to send out a different email. Let's open up elements again, send a different email, drag it this way, click on the plus sign, drag it here. And again, we're going to send out a different email. Let me clean this up a bit. Okay. And add the other branch right here. Now let's select what this is going to represent. So if that field is filled with true, it's going to send out that email. And if it's false, it's going to send the other email just to understand what if else condition does. Now, like I said, this is going to be based depending on the form that you have. If you have a drop down menu, you're going to get those options for conditions on that one. Now we have conditional branch. Let's get rid of this one now. Firm. Let's go into conditional branch and let's click on the gear icon. Now this one is going to be let us create several conditional branches. So let's click, click on this one. We're going to say if the name is empty, let's save that one. Let's add another branch in this case, for example, if the email is equal to is equal not see how it changes depending on the field that you have. Let's just say if it contains, for example, a value, we're going to say if it contains Gmail, save, you know what? That's one of the free email providers that they have. We're going to do different things. So let's click on the options. So if the name is empty, it's going to send out this email. And if it's going to branch out to one of the ones that has the email, if it contains Gmail, it's going to send out a different email just to let you understand how the branch works. We can do other things like add more approvals to that section. So for example, if it contains Gmail, we're going to add another approval right here. Okay. Let's connect it. So, we're saying if it contains Gmail, which is a free email, we're going to need a second approval. Just take that in, as an example. And it's going to send out this other outcome. If it's approved, it's going to send that email. If it's denied, we can connect it to another email. Okay. 
Next thing we have is merge branches. So if we need to merge everything, that's pretty obvious. We can send them right here. And something really important, we need to connect them at the end to let them know that the approval flow is over. That is how the elements work. Once you have all that set, we can go into settings and set the other settings right here. For example, approval full title, we can move it, change it to something else. The status enabled or disabled and the publish settings are available right here. So we have the link for that form to go. We have the options for embed, assign the form, the email embedded on the third party platform. And let's go into back to approvals so you can understand what happens once these emails are sent out. Okay, let's open up one of these previous approvals that we have. Let's wait for it to load. And let's go into this one, it says one total activity. Let's go into inbox. Okay, and this is one of our inbox for one of the approvals that we've created. And you can see the overview of, for example, the inbox, pending approvals, snoozed, archive, and trash. Now in this section, we have the option to approve or deny the same as we would on an email that we just received. So for example, we have the, the submission information. For example, we have when it was submitted, the name, the phone number, um, the, the survey that they answered, the email that they used, and we can add a comment if we like and then approve or deny this. We can also reply, add a tag, comment, and we can do more things like assigning it to someone else, deleting it, printing, customizing PDF, and so much more that we can view here on the inbox section. Well, that is the overview for the approvals on Jotform. We thank you all for watching and we'll see you on our next tutorials. Bye-bye.